Okay, Professor, a bit of a sound breakfast. Oh, it was a bowl of Special K. Special K? With red berries. We are talking about failure and we are talking about recovery from failure. It's just gone past exam season here in the UK. Lots of students have done A-levels across the, the pond where I'm from in Ireland. They just finished doing something called a leaving certificate. About a month's time, going to be anxiously waiting for those results to come out. Similarly here in Nottingham, we've just finished doing um, exams. And again, in the, actually next week, the students are going to be getting their exam results. And I have had many students sitting where you are, Brady, and in absolute tears if they don't get the marks they expect. And thinking the bottom has dropped out of the world, how are they ever going to recover from this? And if they can't get that first class honours mark or that 2-1 um, that marks above 60% or 70%, uh, how can they ever, ever continue? So I tell them, I failed the third year of my four year degree. And I just didn't just fail it a little bit, I failed it really, really badly. I was heavily involved. You're probably not gonna be surprised to hear this Brady in terms of music. I was in a band, I was going back and forth. In fact, my maths exam in my third year, we had a gig. I um, sort of further north in, in Ireland. I came home, which was again, north of Dublin. Got a, at about three o'clock in the morning, got a bus to Dublin, six o'clock in the morning, arrived in for that exam with about two hours sleep at nine o'clock, wrote my name on the paper and walked out. Uh, I really, there was no revision, I was not prepared. So it was in Ireland, what was the university? What were you studying? Tell me more about you and stuff. So I was at Dublin City University, an absolutely wonderful university, uh, doing so, uh, BSc, a four year BSc, uh, bachelor's of Science in Applied Physics. First year I really engaged, I loved the course. When I went to DCU on an open day I was absolutely blown away. They had lots of lasers and lots of computer driven stuff and I thought this is great. I've always been interested in fiddling with things and um, building little circuits and as you know Brady we've done a few 60 Symbols videos on those types of things. So the, hence the Applied Physics bent. I loved it and then Second year, I started to disengage, as many students did. It gets conceptually challenging in second year. So the first year, you can coast a little bit because it's mapping on to what you did in secondary school and high school. Second year, particularly when you start getting into quantum mechanics, electromagnetism, vector calculus, you've really got to start knuckling down. I didn't knuckle down because I was completely distracted with the music side of things. So second year was okay. I did okay, but sort of almost seated my pants. Third year was a complete disaster because I just di completely disconnected, um, failed third year and thought absolutely when I found out, I don't know why I wasn't expecting it, I don't know what sort of miracle was I thought was going to happen, um, but yeah, it, the bottom dropped out of my world. Was it too hard for you or did you just love music too much? I loved music too much. Um, it is conceptually challenging. Was it too hard? I. Uh, I needed to put in a lot more effort than I, I did. And so I was not gonna coast through in the way I did in first year. Third year, I had to repeat. I had to repeat the entire year. Um, so my four year degree came a five year degree. Tell me about that, you know, walking out of that exam and not putting anything there and presumably getting some results piece of paper that says zero or fail yeah, written on it. Exactly, yeah. I think, well, I think I was surprised because I can't quite remember what the result was, but it was like 10%. I was going, 10% for putting right in my name. Something's gone wrong here. Um, but yeah, it just, the bottom dropped out of my world. And as I say, I don't understand why. I should have seen it coming from, you know, light years away. Were you answerable to anyone, like parents or family? Was there someone you had to go to with your tail between your legs? Or? My family were very supportive, I've got to say. Um, they, you know, it's my life. This was my decision. If I screw things up, you know, they'll do their best, obviously, to support me. But these are my decisions, my choices. They were funding some of this as well. So that was incredibly good of them. And um, did I get a massive bollocking? No, I think I didn't get a massive bollocking because they understood I was so upset in myself. And that's another aspect. Did you cry? I did, yeah, yeah. I cried when I got the, 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 res the results um, and just opened them. And yeah, it was just, again, the shock, but there shouldn't have been a shock, but there was a shock. Phil, I'm imagining at this part of your life, 
you were suddenly thinking, I'm going to be a rock star. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be bad. Did you care that you weren't going to be a physicist if you thought you were going to be a rock star? Interestingly, so that, that's a really good point, Brady. So up until that point, I thought, well, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll just physics. We'll focus on the music side. That's going to work out. And yet, when I got those results, I went, oh, Christ, I really do care. Um, you might have to bleep that out, sorry. I, I really do care about this. It really does matter to me. And you don't want to fail. Nobody wants to fail. And what I really want to stress about this, one of the things I want to stress, there are many, but one of the things I want to stress, this was my fault. It wasn't because, for example, you know, the exam paper didn't match exactly the sample exam papers. It wasn't because the, you know, the lecturer had the absolute audacity to expect me to read 10 pages of, of notes a week. It wasn't because you know, I was expected to do conceptually challenging physics in a physics degree. Of course, this was my fault. That is key to recovery. You've got to own it. You've got to go, I've screwed these things up. I've feck these things up. How do I recover? Because the problem is if you feck these things up and then point the finger, and say, it's not my fault, it's that fault, and the paper shouldn't have been like that, or the course shouldn't have been like that. That, that doesn't help. That really doesn't help. It doesn't sound like it was the end of the world, though. You just had to do the year again. There was no, like, other than, like, a year of your life gone, which, you know, is a year, it sounds like there was a way out. Like, you know, it wasn't like... There was almost, like, no repercussions for you. I didn't know that at the time. I absolutely didn't know that at the time. And the other thing, I was worried about funding. How do I get through this? Um just financially how are we going to do this also just the feeling of I failed I, I I you know I love physics I screwed this up and what am I going to do now you're right in that in the end it all worked out but everything's 2020 in hindsight Brady so you know looking back at it through the lens of uh, how many years? An awful lot of years. I'm 56 today. It's my birthday. Um, I had a lot more hair back then as well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, looking back from now, it's, yeah, it, it seems like nothing, but not at the time. It was crushing. It was absolutely crushing at the time. Did it make you a better student when you repeated that year and did your fourth year? Did you absolutely nail it? I wouldn't say I absolutely nailed it because one thing I was carrying pass marks from the, the third year. Oh, so you, those don't get erased from the record? Oh, no, they don't get erased from the record. Those, you carry those through. But I worked a lot. And in particular on the final year project, which was a massive part of the, of the degree um, assessment. And I loved that project. Oh, my, I love that. It was on something completely unrelated to what I'm doing now. But actually... Quite related to Nottingham in terms of medical physics, it was on algorithms for computerized tomography for CAT scans and developing different types of, of ways of treating the data and reconstructing an image from the CT data. And pure coding on a 12 megahertz 386 machine back in the day where I used to have it leave it running overnight to do something which takes literally less than a second now. I loved that and I went, okay, I really, really enjoy this. And from that point onwards, I didn't look back. Um, I went on, I got, the, I got the marks, just, just got the marks to allow me to do a PhD. And it was the same year as Don Eigler and Schweitzer had moved individual atoms around to spell out IBM. And a PhD came up in that area and I went, okay, let's do this. And fortunately, my um, PhD supervisor, Greg Hughes, thank you, Greg, for the confidence and faith and trust, took me on board despite the not exactly stellar marks and despite that awful third year performance. Did you have to keep explaining that third year? Like, would, would that PhD supervisor look at your record and go, what the hell happened here? What's going on? He certainly said that initially. Uh, but in the interview, it was really focused on, you know, what's the future? What are we going to do now? You've, rec you've clearly recovered from this in fourth year to a certain extent. Um, and I don't think it's going to happen again. And I think that's key because if I, as I say many times to these students that come into the office, if I hadn't failed those exams, I would not be a professor of physics because I would have drifted through. If I just managed to get through that third year without failing, I'd have drifted through fourth year and got at best a past degree, not enough marks to get a PhD, and not enough marks overall to pursue this particular career. So, again, from hindsight, in terms of hindsight, Brady, it was the best thing that really happened to me. 
What happened to your music career? What happened to the... <laughs> did you did you have to give up music in that repeated third year? Did you leave the band? Uh, no, but I certainly managed my time a hell of a lot better. Certainly, the guitar was put in the shed. No gig, no gigs were booked for the two months running up to the exams. I changed a lot of lifestyle choices, let's put it that way. Um, and in the PhD, also continued a little bit in the band, but in, here's, here's the really interesting thing, Brady. Um, when I got to the PhD, I remember um, when we uh, practiced with the band, and this was in Dublin, I remember often being pissed off that I had to leave the lab and go and practice. And that's really told me, okay, this, your pathway here is clear, let's go for that. Also, the fact that I'm not particularly talented, so the rock star thing wasn't going to happen anyway. What was the name of that band you were in in that third year that almost cost you your career? <laughs> so there were two bands. There was a cover band initially called Silent Witness, and we did Lizzie and Maiden, um, Judas Priest covers. We tried some Rush covers that did not go well. Um, and then in throughout the PhD, a band called Sentience. And what was your role in the band? A uh, guitarist and... Um, singer. <laughs> Match up exactly with where it's there was not too far off. Irrational! You're a professor now, you're also a teacher and you guide students. You must see students, your students, young people now, making some of these same mistakes. Do you do you ever put a hand on a shoulder or intervene or do they have to learn from their mistakes? What do you do now? I, I certainly do that and I try to encourage them. And again, sitting where you are, Brady, I've had many students over the years come in and I tell them this story and I say, you know, what you really should do is try not to get to that stage. Again, these are your choices. You've got to make your decisions for yourself and what's right for you at the time. And indeed, if you get to second or third year and think, well, OK, physics really isn't for me, then that's a hard choice to make. For me, I was always enthusiastic about physics. It's, it's, it's sort of deep down, I always knew that's what I wanted to do. But some students, first, second year, they, they, they hang on and they hang on and they hang on and they fail exam after exam after exam. That takes, addressing that is one of the most difficult things I do in this job. And it is, it's heartbreaking sometimes to say, well, maybe you should think about you know, a different choice. And also the funding system in the UK for students does not make that easy at all. So th that's one of the more difficult aspects of the job and it's something I find really uh, challenging, let's put it that way. Because you talk about the failure in your experience almost, almost as a positive. Like, no, absolutely but, but, as a positive. But, but for a lot of people... It, I think that's dangerous yeah, I agree. because for a lot of people, it, it will be career ending. It will be path ending. And like, I think they might listen to your words and think, well, that's OK. I'll just I'll just write this one off and make this a gap year and keep playing in the band or keep doing the thing I'm doing. And, and everything's recoverable. But I don't think everything is recoverable. Great, great point, Brady. And it's something I'm always, always very keen to highlight. This is, you know, failing exams is not a good strategy in life. It really, really isn't. In my case, it worked out. But as you say, Brady, in many, many cases, it doesn't work out. But it's how you recover from that failure that is key. If, if the argument is you're pointing the finger at others and saying, well, it's their fault, not mine, that's an issue. If you own it and you say, right, I've got to recover from this, this is what I want to do, then you, you can move forward. But you've got to... You've got to question, is this really what I want? And when you're 18, 19, 20, whatever, or even when you're 40 or 50, that's a difficult, that's a really difficult question to, to answer. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. This is, don't, failing exams is not the way to go. This video is one of a few we made exploring failure, applying to university, and the use of league tables to rank universities. See the video description for all the links. You can also find more videos from Phil Moriarty and more physics in general from across the 60 Symbols channel. The wonderful thing is, just like silicon, copper oxide is something called a semiconductor. And so you, with this type of, of diode, what happens is you get two different types of, of silicon, one which is doped what's called N-type, 